Hello everybody, Miss Mira here. I hope you're having a great fall and enjoying all this beautiful weather and all the beautiful fall colors out there. Uh, let's see, last week um, we celebrated All Saints Day on Sunday and Miss Marissa told the story of uh, Saint Hildegard and all her special gifts and um, got you to think about all your special gifts too. And then the week before that, Mr. Paul told the story of the Exodus and how um, Moses led the people out of Egypt and slavery under the Pharaoh um, and how God helped him part the Red Sea so the people could escape across it. And then once they were safely on the other side, he filled the sea back in so the Pharaoh and his army of chariots uh, couldn't chase them down or get to them. So we're picking up there with our um, stories of God today. Um, and because once the people of God got across the Red Sea, they still had a long journey ahead of them. And as you remember from uh, our previous uh, Desert Box stories, uh, the desert is a dangerous place. And um, it's really, really scorching hot in the day and really freezing cold at night. And there's very little to eat and very little to drink. Um, so uh, the journey ahead of them was a really tough one. And uh, fortunately, God was with them. And he sent a pillar of smoke ahead of them during the day to guide them. And at night, it became a pillar of fire um, to help light their way. So, but their journey was very, very long. And they were um, very, very tired and they had to have a lot of faith um, that God would lead them to their promised land. So, one day, um, while they were journeying, they came to a great mountain covered in fire and smoke. And this was Mount Sinai. And the people were afraid. Um, but Moses knew that God had an important message to give his people. So he climbed up to the top of this scary mountain um, and through all the fire and the smoke. And when he got to the top, God came so close to Moses and Moses came so close to God that Moses knew what God wanted him to do. He wanted him to write down on these giant stone tablets, the 10 best ways to live. And um, these are also known as the Ten Commandments. So um, Moses did as he was told, and then he carried these big, heavy tablets back down the mountain to the people. And the three most important parts of the 10 best ways to live are these three things. Love God, love people, and God loves us. Now the people of God love the 10 best ways so much that they wanted to keep them with them always. And they needed a special place for them. <laughs> Do you have a special place at home for your important things? For things that are precious to you or mean a lot to you? Or things that you want to keep with you always? I have a special place that I keep my special things and I brought it today. Well, this is it. I've had it for a very long time so it's gotten very heavy and very full of stuff but I thought I'd show you a few of the things in my special box. Um, I have I have these hats um, and these were the hats that they gave us in the hospital when Abby and Duncan were born. Um, as you can see, Duncan was a little bit bigger than Abby 
Uh, in fact, they had to exchange his hat two times in order to get one that would fit over his giant head. Um, and these are their hospital bracelets um, from, from their birth as well. Uh, I have uh, special cards and notes from loved ones in here. I have a card from Mr. Greg from way back in the day. Um, I have um, I have a special note from Abby that she wrote to me. She was very little, um, and I was it was uh, I was going through a very rough time because I had poison ivy, but I got it's called systemic poison ivy, so I had it. Uh, from head to toe. So I was miserable and itching and I couldn't sleep. So she wrote me a note that said, it's a test for your blessings. And um, I've always kept that. And anytime I'm going through uh, a tough time or uh, struggling with something, I, I read this note and it inspires me. Uh, I have a bookmark Duncan made me in preschool. I think those are a bunch of eyes. I think, um, but it says, my peace I give to you, uh, love Duncan, with the backward C. Um, I have uh, remembrance cards from loved ones that have passed away. Um, this is one from uh, my Aunt Georgine, who's one of the most wonderful people I've ever known, one of the most giving people I've ever known. Uh, and, oh, I've got... I've got a bunch of other stuff in here, um, but all stuff that um, is precious to my heart. Um, I even have a minky, um, an old, <laughs> it uh, looks kind of um, petrified now, but um, it's, uh, both my kids really love their pacifiers, so called the minkies, so I keep that to remember the minky mouse. So, um, that's my special box, and I keep it on my dresser in my bedroom. Um, and that leads into today's, this week's Godly Plays uh, story, which is called The Ark and the Tent. So, the people of God love the 10 best ways so much that they wanted to have them always with them. So God told them to build a box called an ark and to cover the ark in gold. It had poles on the side um, so they could carry it with them wherever they went. Now, you can't just walk up to something as precious as the ark. You need a way to get ready. The people wondered what they could do. God told them to place an altar of incense in front of the ark. You could burn the sweet smelling incense. You could walk past and through the cloud of incense to get to the ark and that could help you get ready. But that still was not enough. Next, God told them to put a table with 12 pieces of bread on one side and a seven branched lampstand called a menorah on the other side. You could walk between the table with 12 pieces of bread for each of the 12 tribes of Israel on one side and the menorah on the other side and then pass the altar of incense through the sweet smelling cloud of smoke. That could help you get ready, but that still was not enough. Next, they decided to put the walls of a tent around oops, the ark, the altar of incense, the 
the table with the 12 pieces of bread and the seven branched lampstand. keep this place set apart to help people get ready to come close to God. Inside the tent, they made a special place for the ark called the Holy of Holies, a special room. And over top, of the tent, they put four coverings. One was linen with purple and red figures of cherubim woven into it. One was made from woven goat hair. The third was made of ram skin dyed red and finally, the outer covering was of tanned goat skin. Now only the priests could go inside. Next, they put in front of the tent, an altar covered in bronze for sacrifices. And they built a great bowl of bronze and filled it with water for the priest to wash in in order to get ready for prayer. Then outside the whole tent and the surrounding area, they put a fence made of fabric that could be rolled up oops, and carried with them wherever they went and it helped mark the whole special place called the tabernacle. The priests began to wear special clothes to help them get ready to go inside this special place. When all the tabernacle was finished, Moses blessed it. Aaron and his sons were made priests and they took the tent and the ark with them wherever the people of God traveled. The Levites helped them care for the tabernacle and conduct the worship services there. Then God gave Aaron and his sons these words to bless the people of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now, I wonder what part of the story you liked best. I wonder what part of the story was the most important. I wonder what part of the story you saw yourself in or what part of the story you felt was about you. I wonder if there's any of the story that we can leave out and still have all the story we need. Well, I hope you like this week's story. Um, the desert box is always a, an exciting place to explore. Um, I hope that you have a good week and um, I look forward to um, learning more about God and God's people with you next time.